Welcome everyone here. Good morning. Uh, and welcome to the Yale Entrepreneurs and Investors Conference. Um, my name is Jimmy Liu, and uh, I am a class of 1977 at Trumbull College and the chair of the uh, Yale Alumni Association, the AYA, uh, the uh, organization that helped produce this particular program. It's really uh, heartwarming for me to see such a large crowd. Uh, I've been doing adventure investing uh, for the last 20 years in uh, the U.S. and China in technology and healthcare, and it's, it's great to see such a large crowd of Yaleys who are in the field of technology, entrepreneurs, investors, uh, folks who support and service uh, the uh, overall ecosystem, and um, we've had uh, a lot of uh, uh, smaller, I guess, events uh, focused on technology topics in the past but uh, there was a growing demand to have a larger event, a more comprehensive program uh, to focus on this topic, and here we are today. So, great venue, and hopefully you'll have an opportunity to meet each other, uh, share insights, and uh, maybe do, uh, you know, work out a few term sheets at the same time while you're here. So, but, um, so I wanted to uh, mention that, uh, you know, we, we focused on the theme of uh, Yale's ecosystem, uh, because we really wanted to recognize the incredible entrepreneurial spirit and energy on campus, and also sort of the global community surrounding it. Um, it's amazing to have uh, folks from all different professions here, people with different expertise, coming together uh, to be able to uh, share thoughts uh, during this particular conference. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the uh, Yale clubs of Silicon Valley, San Francisco and LA for helping us uh, put this event uh, together today. Uh, also, I'd like to uh, uh, thank the sponsors, the key sponsors. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be able to uh, hold this kind of event. Um, sponsors include uh, Goodwin Proctor, uh, the lead, a leading uh, technology uh, law firm, a firm that I actually used as a uh, our Series A uh, law firm investing in a company in Boston called iRobot, and that has been very, very successful. And then uh, Goodwin was very, very good to us in terms of our representation. And then um, the Cyber Associates, the uh, investment bank, uh, technology investment bank that uh, I'm sure we'll be able to take advantage of going forward uh, in your various activities and field making uh, uh, activities. And then, of course, uh, our very own uh, Paper G that uh, started on the Yale campus and uh, grew out and expanded and taken over the world. Uh, they have their headquarters here uh, in San Francisco, and I think they also have offices in Seattle and Vancouver. Um, I'd also like to single out uh, Victor Wong, uh, who is uh, leading the charge at PPG uh, for having the vision and the energy uh, to uh, think about having a program like this. And uh, <laughs> So it's, uh, it's uh, people like Victor, you know, I got an email late last night saying, you have to be here at 8.30, you've got, you've got like eight to 10 minutes to do your thing. Uh, you've got a one sentence introduction of our guests from, uh, from Yale. So, so as a uh, board member of portfolio companies, I appreciate CEOs that can really take charge. So thanks Victor for, for uh, putting this thing together. So um, let me uh, then now talk about the AYA really quickly because um, I think um, you know AYA is the organization that helped uh, to support programs such as this, and um, we've really kind of transformed in the uh, last six or seven years. Uh, we did our first strategic plan ever in 2007 to see if we can go ahead and, and sort of move away from just uh, supporting class reunions, uh, social events, uh, happy hours, uh, to initiate programs that are much more meaningful. And so we um, have content-rich programs like this. Uh, we have uh, certain programs that focus on service. And so it's a very important part of our mission uh, as alumni uh, to service our local communities and, and also uh, communities around the world. We have uh, the alumni service uh, core that bring various uh, skill sets of alumni to various underserved uh, sections of the world, like in Africa, helping uh, women entrepreneurs figure out their business plan, uh, going to China, uh, 
to uh, help teach basketball and soccer students, uh, or to take care of health uh, uh, related uh, problems uh, in uh, in uh, Dominican Republic. So uh, you can participate in that. It happens uh, several times a year in different locations. We've also had volunteer leadership exchanges where um, <coughs> you know alumni. <coughs> You know, alumni go to various countries uh, to meet with uh, their counterparts in uh, uh, universities, leading universities in Japan, Australia, and other locations to compare notes about uh, alumni engagement. Uh, so then we have the signature day of service, uh, which is actually going to take place tomorrow, May 10. Uh, I'm actually going to be uh, putting my work clothes on and, and cleaning up alleyways in Chinatown tomorrow. Uh, but we've had programs all over the world where uh, alumni, uh, and we started this actually six years ago, and a lot of other universities are, are following suit, so it's nice to be able to uh, get copied in, in that particular initiative. And so this year is actually going to be pretty amazing because we were able to get, as our honorary chairs of this year's uh, day of service, U.S. Presidents 41, 42, 43, and possibly 45 um, being the uh, uh, honorary chairs. And so go to YouTube and, and uh, check out the uh, personal videos of George W. Bush and Bill Clinton when they talk about Yale and commitment to service uh, and uh, what it means uh, to uh, give back to the community. Uh, those are pretty inspirational uh, videos that you can check out. So <clears throat> let me go ahead and then move forward to uh, talk about uh, how you can get engaged. Uh, you can talk to me, you can talk to several of the, uh, the board members, uh, current and former board members that I see in the audience, and talk to uh, Mickey Dobbs, uh, uh, AYA uh, staff member, uh, about how you would like to uh, get involved uh, with Yale and with the uh, AYA. So I'm really looking forward to uh, today's program. I think uh, we can use this program to really build upon it, have the opportunity for you each one of you to meet each other and then to be able to get to know each other better because I think we as Yalees share a really unique bond and this relationship that we have with each other, uh, I think we can help each other sort of achieve our, our personal goals uh, going forward. So um, without uh, further ado, let's uh, get to the program because uh, we have two very special guests from Yale. And uh, maybe I can invite uh, Jim and, and Kyle on, on stage uh, to talk about the state of entrepreneurship on campus. Um, I'll first introduce Jim. I guess you have a slide or two that you'd like to show. Jim uh, is a, uh, an entrepreneur in his own right, uh, started a, a, a very successful uh, company, and uh, he is now the uh, Director, executive managing director of the uh, Yale Entrepreneurial Institute, and he is uh, there on campus mentoring uh, students uh, with new uh, venture ideas. And uh, a lot of groups have already uh, benefited from Jim's uh, expert advice and guidance. So, uh, Jim, um, tell us what's going on uh, with why you're here. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Um, Kyle Rowan, so I think keep on that for now. Um, actually, <coughs> Now that you figure that out, I'll take it back. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for having us here. It's, uh, it's an honor and a, and a privilege to be asked to be part of uh, this discussion. Uh, what, what we're doing at Yale is starting nascent new ventures with the, the students primarily, and for the last few years with, with faculty as well. Um, and interestingly, if I can steal the, the clip of that. <coughs> Interestingly, I, I'd be remiss if I started going through this presentation without noting one, one person in particular. We, uh, we got started in the mid-2000s, 2006, 2007, when, as many of you already know, who are either mentors or board members at YAI here in the room, um, the Wall Street Journal published an article about students in Yale Transfer Adventures who weren't successful and came back into the Bay Area, and Matt Sanchez, who's the CEO of the company, in whose oratorium you now sit, was that entrepreneur. So here we are, 10 years later, talking to you about what we're doing at Yale with starting up dozens of student ventures in response to the challenges 
that this young guy faced on the campus back in the mid 2000s. So I think there's some <laughs> some poetic justice to the fact that we're back here in shop to talk about entrepreneurship at, at Yale. Um, I'm going to describe I'm going to describe for you what we do at, at the university, only insofar as for those of you who are from out here in the Bay Area are, are concerned, who are interested either in being associated with what we do, mentors for what we do investors for the ventures that are coming out, or supporters of the program. We would love to have greater involvement from the alumni community. We are not faculty. The people who run YEI, we're staff members. We're business people. We're paid to start companies, help get them financed, and help them hire employees and be successful to the full extent possible. So we rely greatly upon the alumni community in making all those connections and getting those ventures off the ground. So. We really think this is a, a huge plus for us to be here today. What you're looking at is a picture of the process we go through every summer. Um, over the course of the last seven years, we've essentially stitched together a series of programs. The Summer Accelerator is probably the best known part of YEI because it's in that process, 10 weeks of every summer, we, have, we, have, we identify the, the paper G's in the world, the sort of the high flying ventures that we think have the greatest chance of success and help to accelerate them with the help of our board members, our advisory council, our mentors, and help them get, get them to first financing. Um, networking is extremely important. You would think that every Yale student had access to people who were um, polished and, and uh, captains of industry, but in fact, that's not the case. So what we've found ever since we first got started is having exposure to people who actually are uh, further along in their careers is extremely important for helping those students get started. So every year we'll, we'll invite back people who've, who've built very considerable businesses to help talk to the students about, about aspects of their businesses that might be relevant to, to new startups. And we've been in existence so long now that some of the fellows who graduated from YI, including Victor Wong and guys like Bob Casey pictured here, they come back and talk to students who are coming up behind them about the successes and challenges they have in starting businesses. And it's pretty typical to see when you have a 25 or a 30 year old in the room talking about the challenges that, that they have. There's a great deal of interest in the part of the, of the 20 and the 22 year olds to figure out how they can use these people as role models for their, for their, for their own businesses. Mentors are probably one of the most important resources we have. Um, I think I speak for Kyle as well as for many of our board members when I say that having access to people who have particular domain expertise in the businesses that we're trying to start is essential. We really can't do that on our own as generalists. We don't have enough expertise for that. So we're hoping that in the fullness of time, for those of you who are interested in being more, more associated with the university, that you would consider being mentors to some of the ventures as well. Most recently, and this came out, this grew out of a conversation that we had with uh, um, Scott Faber, who's someplace in the room, and a handful of other alums here in Northern California last year. We realized that as a university, we were a little bit underserved in the sense that we didn't have a large enough tech community to help get our ventures off the ground. So last year, Alina Gripsko, a colleague who's someplace in the audience here, she built a, she's standing over in the corner, uh, she piloted what was called a tech boot camp. So alongside the summer fellowship every year now, we also run a 10-week technology incubator that teaches kids the full, web, the full web stack and lets them get their tech ventures, their tech ideas off the ground. This year, we're doubling the size of the program, and we're hopeful that in years to come, we'll put scores, if not hundreds of students, through this facility to help create a, a technology layer on top of the liberal arts milieu that Yale is known for. Um, probably the, uh, the greatest surprise to us is the fact that um, no matter where you look, you find ideas. I mean, we're, we're sitting on a campus that has 11,000 of the smartest kids in the world and 4,000 of the smartest faculty. And so a few years ago, we decided that in addition to the summer fellowship, we would sprinkle small amounts of money on the water every academic year through something called the Venture Creation Program. Here's how it works. First of every month, you can come to us with an idea. And if we think the idea makes any sense at all, we'll give you a couple thousand bucks to try it. And this year alone, we've had 90 different venture teams come to us looking for support. 
so many teams that in fact we had to outsource the responsibility for handing out the money. Um, kids in school of management, they're pretty smart. So we said, here's the money. You guys decide who to hand it out to. So these six people this year decided which of the 59 teams, uh, which of the 89 teams that came to us would, would get support. And so what we're finding now is not, not just that we have people with interesting ideas, but that we also have talent enough around us through students, faculty, alumni, or, or the VCs and angels behind them to make smarter and smarter decisions on a larger and larger scale. So we're very excited about this. And last but not least, we were fortunate enough this past year to start our own, our own fund, very modest size, $3 million, for helping to put uh, small investments into the best of the ideas coming through the Summer Accelerator. Uh, we made our first investment in a team just a few months ago, a team that came out of the School of Management, actually. And we're hopeful to make another handful of investments before the start of the summer. So if you look at the, sort of the, the, the staging of the, the activities that we conduct now, we go all the way from very light touch of education, very small amount of education and, and skill building, through acceleration and into investment. Um, this whole process is only going to work better if we have access to more alumni like yourself. So we're hopeful that um, if you're interested in what we're doing, that you'll, you'll contact us, either myself or Lena or any of my colleagues listed here. Um, none of these things would be possible. And I just really want to share with you the fact that none of these would be possible without the fact that we do have partnerships across Yale. YEI does not live in isolation from the rest of the university. And for those of you who've been away for either a few years or maybe a few dozen years, the schools that some of you, or that all of you went to, they're all beginning to form their own innovation framework as well. And I list here just a small handful of the schools that we work, we work most closely with, in addition to Yale College, obviously. Because these schools all work their own processes, and what YI tries to do is to take the best of those projects out of there and turn them, where appropriate, into ventures. And first among those schools that really deserves attention is the School of Management, because um, it's been our closest partner uh, since the beginning, and now with the, the advent of having a director of entrepreneurship in the, in the person of Kyle Jensen, who sits to my right, I think we're looking at a really interesting time period at Yale where we're going to do a lot more things together. And Kyle, who came to town close to, is it two years ago now? Three years ago. Kyle's been a very important partner to, to Yale, even before his, his, uh, his rising to, to the uh, entrepreneurship uh, chief at, at School of Management. He's been a YI mentor, an angel investor, a very skilled serial entrepreneur, um, has great technical skills himself, and we're, we're thrilled that he come out here today and, and talk to us about things that he's going to do with SOM. So with that, I'm going to turn the mic over to Kyle. So as Jim said, obviously, uh, Sounds like things have never been better for entrepreneurship at SOM, right? There's incredible enthusiasm for entrepreneurship and support for it that transcends both students, uh, obviously the alumni, right? even here on the West Coast, the administration, the faculty, everyone's interested in it. Uh, so uh, there is something we're missing though, right? What is missing? And that is an entrepreneurship curriculum. Like the four credit scholarly study of, of entrepreneurship that transcends disciplines. Uh, if you go to, you go to Cal here, if you go to Stanford, uh, you go to MIT, so I have my BSU at MIT, uh, there's 30 courses on entrepreneurship. Uh, at Yale, we have, we have two, three, and that's kind of broadly defined entrepreneurship. Uh, well, that, that should be a cause for introspection, right? Uh, it's an unusual thing. It's not something that we have taught as a university. Uh, so, a couple months ago, uh, Barry Nailbuff, who, who you, you may know is a, the founder of Honest Tea, he's an entrepreneur in his own right, he's a faculty person at uh, the School of Management, he got together with Ted Snyder uh, and uh, you know, Peter and Ben, and they thought, well, should, can we teach entrepreneurship, uh, and should, is that something we should do? And the answer was, yes you can, other people do, and we should too. So I'm incredibly enthused to tell you that uh, the, uh, the School of Management is hiring a body of faculty in the area of entrepreneurship to teach entrepreneurship to Yaleys. Uh, I am the first person hired into that program, and I am the director of that program. And 
I think that is the best job on the planet. It is a yeah. I, I couldn't be more excited. I can't believe that. You know, I actually get paid for it too, which is amazing. <laughs> Uh, so, so let me tell you. Let me tell you what I'm working on and what we're doing and the scale of the investment. So, my life essentially has three priorities now. Uh, the first is building this curriculum. Uh, that curriculum. Well, I'll get into that. First is building the curriculum. The second is supporting, in particular, uh, founders at the School of Management. Okay, we have not done a great job of that in the past. And the third is working with Yes and YI and Jim and uh, Cve and Innovate Health, all the people at. Uh, at Yale who are interested in entrepreneurship to contribute what I can to an already strong community and culture of entrepreneurship. Uh, I hope that I can make a meaningful impact in that regard. As, as, uh, as you may know, so Jim and I are great, great friends. Uh, you know, we're attached to the hip. I, I have this, ha this necklace. It's a half heart. He has the other half. Right? So we're really we're working together to do this. So I'm super excited about it. So let me tell you about some of the things in particular that I, I, want, to, I want to express to you the scale of this, this investment in this effort. Uh, so around the curricular piece, okay? So as I said, we would like to create a curriculum for the scholarly study of entrepreneurship for credit in the classroom, okay? Uh, that curriculum will be available not only to MBA students, but anybody on the campus. That includes Yale College, okay? Uh, and we're making a significant investment in that regard. So I, let me tell you about that just so you can realize this is not vaporware. So I am the first full-time faculty hire. I have another full-time faculty hire. I have two part-time faculty already on staff. Full-time deputy director, full-time admin assistant. Fantastic space in this new Evans building which you may have seen on campus, right? We have this like garish glass cathedral to management that's at the corner of uh, uh, Sachem and Whitney, you know, a quarter billion dollar building, fantastic, beautiful space. We have a big center in there for supporting us with entrepreneurs. Uh, and here's the most special thing. Um, this, this is fantastic, you're going to love this. When you look at the primary literature around entrepreneurship pedagogy, there's very few things that are known. So there's, there's, there's not too much social science to support how best to teach entrepreneurship, right? And there's different people have different philosophies about it. Should it be action based? Should it be lecture of what should it be. Uh, there is one exception to that, and that is that uh, exposure to experienced entrepreneurs in your educational process substantially increases the probability that you yourself will become an entrepreneur. So in addition to the positions that I mentioned to you, I have four part-time visiting faculty slots that will be filled by Yale alumni who are entrepreneurs to come back and share their experiences. This is a big deal, right? These are people who are incredibly experienced. It is important to get students in front of those people. So we have a number of people lined up for the first year. I couldn't be more excited. Uh, so some of them you'll know, and, and I'm sure they'll resonate with you. So for example, Elon Bombs, who I know funded many of you, is the founder of Launch Capital, um, you know, seed state investment firm on, uh, on, the, on the East Coast, uh, Yale SOM alumni. Uh, he will be teaching entrepreneurial finance in the fall, right? It's gonna be fantastic. The thing I'm most excited about uh, is that in the spring, uh, Miles Lasseter, Miles, where are you? Where are you, Miles? Right there, founder of Hire One, obviously, you know, a legend in his own right. Miles and I will be teaching uh, management of software development in the spring, which is fantastic, right? So those among you who are in the technology space, if you have lamented that Yale lacks a uh, Harvard CS50, and you know, we need to have more entrepreneurship education, this class is absolutely perfect for that. I couldn't be more excited about it. So. So this is to say that we essentially are investing a great deal in the curricular component at Yale. I think it will fundamentally change Yale, that we will teach entrepreneurship, there will be many classes. Those classes will have a diverse constituency comprising MBA students, students from the sciences, the professional schools, Yale College. It will be fantastic and everybody is committed to it. So that's the first piece. Second piece is that my mandate is to support, to the extent that I can, uh, entrepreneurs, particularly in the School of Management. I know there's many alumni in the audience, some of whom are uh, entrepreneurs, and you probably felt at the time, back in the day, that we did not support, we did little to support entrepreneurs at the School of Management. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of resources to now uh, do that better, including scholarships, uh, including space, including mentors, including, and this is the best part, uh, we have postgraduate fellowships for five students next year who graduate with MBAs, and they will have their educational loans deferred for two years. 
And during those two years, if their startup implodes or they have a kid or they decide that entrepreneurship is tough and emotionally challenging, they can return and recruit with the graduating class, right? Which is a big deal. So it's a really big deal. So I can say to the student with a straight face, I have limited for you your opportunity cost associated with, with being an entrepreneur. For God's sake, do not take that Goldman job, right? Go, go do something. <laughs> Go do something bold and innovative with your life, right? Go out and change the world, right? Yale has a history of contributing to, to the United States, to the world, and across you know, sciences, medicine, government, society. A large, form, a large number of those contributions now are done through entrepreneurs, right? These are the kind of people we want to generate. So that's the second mandate for me, supporting SOM entrepreneurs in particular. Now, the third is to build a culture of entrepreneurship at, S at SOM in particular, but also to support Jim and Yes and others uh, at building that uh, across Yale. And this is something I'm super excited about. We have a tremendous budget around building culture. And our thesis for building culture is pretty simple, that you have events where we bring back entrepreneurs, we talk about entrepreneurship, we talk about investing, and we provide people numerous opportunities for small positive interactions uh, across disciplines. We also preferably feed them food and maybe some booze, right? And this, I think, is how culture is built, right? We need to do more of this. Jim and I will do this in lockstep next year, and I'm tremendously excited about it. I need many of you to come back and speak. I think Jim, Jim obviously feels the same, so please get in touch. We would like that tremendously. So this is essentially what we're doing. I think it's a bold plan. It is a serious investment. It is very real. Here's how real it is. My budget for this program increases contractually 20% per year. Everyone recognizes. This is a priority, uh, and I am honored to, to be leading this at the School of Management. Uh, so that's essentially all I want to tell you this morning, and I will, I will conclude with a plea. And that is, we're going to create this curriculum at Yale, right? And that curriculum, it should not be the curriculum that I went through at MIT or the curriculum at Stanford or Cal. There are things that make Yale special, right? Yale students contribute not just by building the next Snapchat. We can't just have a program for that. We need a program that teaches them to be entrepreneurs in the private sector, in the public sector, uh, in the nonprofit sector, right? There are things that make Yale special and that should make our entrepreneurship classes fit in with the larger context of a liberal arts education at Yale. If you have opinions about that, if you have thoughts about what that should look like, I am all ears. I am in desperate need for your counsel and would appreciate it greatly. So please do get in touch with me uh, because this is the time in which we're trying to shape this. And those of you who've been through Yale and know most what should be there, uh, I would like to hear from you. So that's all I have to say. Thank you.